We appreciate you coming along today. Before your near-death encounter, could you kindly inform us about your background? Obviously. Maria Houston is my name. I work as a high school English teacher in an Ohio small town and am 44 years old. After 15 years of marriage, my spouse Mark has produced two children. I had a very normal existence up until around six months ago. But then something happened to fundamentally alter everything. Specifically, six months ago, what happened? That was Friday afternoon, roughly at 3.30 p.m. Just ending my last class of the day, I was walking to my car in the school parking lot. I recall being somewhat short of breath and especially weary. But I attributed it to the stress of the week. You were not feeling quite right then. What then happened? I suddenly felt great pressure in my chest as I got to my car. It was like nothing I had ever known before. A weight that made breathing difficult. That is horrifying. Was it perhaps more acute or like heartburn? Oh, it's far worse than heartburn, like an elephant seated on my chest. I struggled to breathe at all. This isn't normal. Something's really wrong, I recall thinking. What then did you do? Thinking if I could just sit down? I tried to unlock my car and felt better. But then my view darkened around the margins. When I tried to shout for aid, no sound came out. My legs giving out comes last and then everything went dark. Whoa, so you collapsed straight in the parking lot? Indeed, I seem to have done. Later on, I learned that one of my colleagues contacted 911 right away after seeing me collapse. The school nurse hurried out carrying a defibrillator and started CPR until the paramedics showed up. Thank you so kindly for seeing me. What was next? Here then is where it gets great. I had what I can only call an out-of-body experience while my colleagues were doing CPR and waiting for the paramedics. An out-of-body experience? Could you define what you imply by that? I felt as though I was floating above my body. Yet it's difficult to put into terms. I could see me slumped on the ground next to my car, surrounded by terrified people. Presumably calling 911, someone was on their phone. Though I knew something serious was happening to my physical body, I felt absolutely serene and at ease. It was the oddest sensation. That sounds rather strange. Did you find yourself afraid? Interestingly, no. I was so very calm and at ease. Then all of a sudden I was surrounded in this very strong brightness. A strong light? Often reported in near-death events, that is not surprising. I have indeed heard that as well. But this went beyond simple illumination. I felt myself being dragged upward as I saw the panorama open out below me. Everything around me grew to be brilliantly vivid, more so than anything I have known on earth. I was surrounded in this great affection and warmth. It was in most gorgeous, overwhelming manner. That sounds just fantastic. Have you been across anything or someone in this condition? I did, indeed. My eyes grew used to the glare and then I noticed someone walking toward me. And it was Jesus. You visited Jesus? Could you sum up his appearance? It is not easy to express. He looked not like the usual paintings you find. He looked like... vivid. More what he looked like, though. It was what I felt in his presence, total love and acceptance. Though I knew without a doubt that it was him, I realized that would sound difficult to believe. He exuded this very great calm and love. He grinned at me and I felt exactly recognized and accepted. That is quite an amazing meeting. Did Jesus address you? He carried out. His voice felt to me like nothing else I've ever heard. It seemed to permeate my whole existence. Mary, my child, he said, have much to show you. How did you answer? Are you ready to grasp the actual power of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life? I nodded and said, Yes, Lord, I'm ready. With that, Jesus grasped my hand and suddenly we were seeing different scenes almost like watching a movie but being present within it. I felt both exhilaration and a little of anxiety. Could you summarize some of these sequences? Jesus showed you something. The first scene we came upon was a woman praying in her bedroom. Jesus said this woman had recently embraced him as her savior. I watched and saw what appeared to be a subdued flame fall over her. This is the moment the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within a believer, stated Jesus, urging close observation. A flame sinking? That is rather striking visual language. Did the woman show any obvious difference right away? Indeed, her whole expression transformed. Her cheeks gleamed with a delight I had never witnessed. 
The first sign of the Holy Spirit's presence is a great, unshakable confidence in salvation. No matter what doubts may come, deep down, this woman now knows she belongs to me, Jesus said. That's quite lovely. Did Jesus show you more? Indeed, we proceeded to several more sequences. Jesus pointed out in every one a different facet of how the Holy Spirit operates in the life of a believer. He showed me a man who had a short fuse before now handling a challenging circumstance patiently and kindly. Jesus said, The second sign of the Spirit's presence is a transformation of character. My Spirit produces fruit in a believer's life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It sounds like Jesus was giving you a comprehensive grasp of the Holy Spirit's work. He also displayed what else? The next scene showed a young woman gently revealing her faith to a colleague. I could sense her growing confidence as she spoke. Her remarks seemed to really affect her audience. Fascinatingly, Jesus said the third sign of the Spirit's presence is a passion and power for evangelism. My spirit gives believers the courage and words to share the good news of salvation. Did Jesus cover the subject of tongue speaking? Some Christian traditions link that with the Holy Spirit. Yes, he did. We watched a religious service in which some members spoke in tongues while others did not. The fourth sign of the Spirit can be speaking in tongues, but it's important to understand that this gift is not given to all believers. Nor is it the only or most important sign of the Spirit's work, Jesus added. That's an interesting point of view. The Spirit distributes gifts as He wills, for the church is building up. Jesus also showed you something else? Jesus presented me with the fifth sign, a great love for Him. We observed as a man went about his regular life, and in every contact, and choice I could see His love for Jesus bursting through. When my Spirit resides in a person, Jesus stated, He produces an unquenchable love for me. The sixth indication was understanding of the truth. Everything becomes about me. Their ideas, words, and deeds all flow from this love. We watched a group of individuals together learning the Bible. I could see comprehension lighting up on their faces as they read and debated. My spirit illuminates the truth of my word, Jesus said. Finally, the seventh and last sign was purity. He offers wisdom and discernment to allow Christians to grasp spiritual truths and apply them to their life. Jesus showed me several Christians choosing to distance themselves from immorality in face of temptation. The ultimate job of my spirit is to make my children holy, Jesus added. This is not about perfection. Rather, this is about a heart completely turned to me as they submit to the Spirit's influence. They start to detest what I despise and love what I love. From your point of view, how long seemed this experience to last, difficult to say. In that world, time seemed to operate differently. Spending hours, maybe even days, with Jesus, I watched and learned. Later on, though, I discovered that I was merely unconscious for around ten minutes in terrestrial terms. That is astonishing. When you returned to your body, could you tell us what transpired? I felt myself being dragged back as Jesus grinned at me and said, Now you understand, my child. Go and share what you've learned. After finishing presenting me the seven signs, my eyes popped open and I suddenly started to gulp for air, surrounded by worried co-workers and paramedics. I was laying on the ground close to my car. That has to have been rather startling. How did you come to understand what had happened? I felt first lost and perplexed. The paramedics informed me my heart had stopped beating for several minutes and I had suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. They had revived me using a defibrillator. I became overcome with feeling as I started to recall my experience when I tried to explain. What I had seen to the paramedics, they thought I was confused given the lack of air. When you told friends and relatives about your experience, how did they respond? My hubby was quite... He had hurried to the hospital as soon as he received the call. And he sat with me as I shared all I had seen and discovered. It was great comfort to know he trusted me without doubt. My kids were captivated and a little in awe. At first, some of my friends were dubious but many of them came to believe that something really significant had really happened to me as they watched my life alter after the event. You reference changes in your life. This encounter has changed you in what ways? It has really changed me. I thought of myself as a Christian before this happened, but my faith served more as a background feature in my life. These days, 
It is first priority in anything I do. I saw myself the seven signs that Jesus exhibited. Could you provide us some particular instances of how these symptoms have shown themselves in your life? Quite sure. About the first sign, confidence in redemption, I have found that even when I err or have questions, there remains an underlying certainty that I belong to God. It comes from His love for me, not from my performance. For the second sign, transformational of character, I have noticed changes in my reaction to challenging events. One student in my class used to truly irritate me. I am now actually sympathetic to him. I can react patiently rather than frustrated. Regarding the third sign, a zeal for evangelism. I have become more forthcoming in sharing my beliefs in casual settings. A cashier recently noted my cross necklace and I found myself readily talking about my beliefs. I used to simply mumble a thank you and carry on. That is rather interesting. Have you also run across the other symptoms? Yes, I did. About spiritual gifts, I have found an encouraging gift. When friends and even acquaintances are going through difficult times, they often come to me and I find I can provide words of comfort that truly speak to them. Deep love for Jesus shows up in my daily life as continuous internal communication with Him. Whether I'm cooking dinner or marking papers, I find my mind instinctively gravitating to Jesus all day. Regarding understanding of the truth, I have developed fresh capacity to apply biblical ideas to practical problems. During a recent faculty meeting, I was able to provide observations grounded on biblical ideas of grace and accountability that even my non-Christian colleagues found useful. Lastly, about holiness, I have changed the entertainment I choose. Shows I used to enjoy now make me uneasy if they contain sexual content or support ideals against God's Word. It's not about guilt, I just lost interest in them and found myself pulled to uplifting and edifying content. That's amazing. These developments seem to have touched every facet of your daily life. They really do have. Furthermore, remarkable is the fact that these developments came from me not striving more to be a good Christian. They emerged organically from my closer contact with the Holy Spirit. Has anyone else observed these changes in you? Indeed, my spouse has made several comments on it. He notes, even in trying circumstances, I seem more at peace. And two have my colleagues observed. One of them inquired of me what my secret was just yesterday. And you told them what? I told them my story. Naturally, some were dubious. Others were rather fascinated. It started some fantastic faith-related discussions. Many of our listeners are undoubtedly asking how they may encounter more of the work of the Holy Spirit in their own life. That's a really interesting question. Drawing on what Jesus showed me, I think it begins with a ready heart. We must call the Holy Spirit to operate in us, to change us. It entails daily surrender, that is, realizing we cannot lead the Christian life on our own power, and asking the Spirit to strengthen us. Practically, this might be beginning every day with a prayer of surrender, asking the Holy Spirit to direct our words, ideas, and deeds. It entails spending time in God's Word so that the Spirit could show us His truths. It is being ready to follow when the Spirit guides us to act or to distance ourselves from something. Furthermore, crucial is our involvement in a community of believers who can support us and hold us responsible, usually working. Mr. Via the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit shapes and polishes us. Those are quite sensible advice. Now I'm interested. Did your experience provide any understanding of the existence of evil or spiritual warfare? Although Jesus did not show me particular scenarios pertaining to spiritual battle, I came away with increased knowledge of the spiritual domain. I came to recognize that, with our physical sight, far less is going on around us than is actually occurring. Jesus underlined that people bursting. With the Holy Spirit had nothing to worry about. He showed me that the spirit inside each of us is far more potent than any force of darkness. But he also underlined the need of donning the complete armor of God, as Ephesians 6 describes. The Holy Spirit helps us to resist spiritual attacks, but we must actively participate in the spiritual disciplines that maintain our relationship to God. As you have told your narrative, have you run across any difficulties or doubts? Absolutely. Not everyone believes me. That's natural. People have said that it was merely a dream brought on by low oxygen levels to my brain. Some have charged me with fabricating it for publicity, 
but I know what I went through and every day I see the result in my life. I merely tell my tale. And let God handle things. I have no need to persuade anyone. That's a really grown-up viewpoint. Now I'm interested. Did your encounter provide any understanding of what happens to people who reject Jesus? That's a delicate subject. Hence, I want to approach it carefully. During my experience, Jesus showed me nothing particularly targeted about that. I walked away with an intense feeling of God's love for all humans, really. I suppose He wants for everyone to know Him. Having experienced the love and tranquility I felt in His presence, my experience has made me more urgent in sharing the wonderful news of Jesus with others. That is amazing. As we begin to close up our discussion, I'm curious now how this experience has shaped your view of pain and difficulty in the Christian life. That's a really important query. My background helps me to see pain from a different angle. I came to see that our worldly existence is really a minor component of our eternity. Given eternity, any hardship we go through here is only transient. More than that, though, Jesus showed me how the Holy Spirit works through our suffering to hone us and bring us more like Christ. He utilizes our pain to strengthen our reliance on God and help us to grow in godly character. He does not bring about our suffering. I now view suffering as chances for the Holy Spirit to operate in forceful ways. Often when we are most feeble in our life is when the Spirit's strength is most clear-cut. These challenging times provide us the chance to show the fruit of the Spirit. Calm in the middle of turmoil, happiness in the face of loss, love toward people who have offended us. That offers a lovely viewpoint. What last words would you like to send our listeners as we draw to an end our time together? Everyone hearing should, I urge, pursue a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. Whether you have long-standing faith or just curiosity about faith, the Holy Spirit is the secret to living the fullness of life God plans for us. Never accept a faith that is just surface level. Call the Holy Spirit to labor intensely in your life. Allow His corrections, His guiding, His promptings. Though the Spirit usually guides us out of our comfort zones, it might be uncomfortable at times. Still, I can guarantee you it's worth it. Furthermore, keep in mind that the action of the Holy Spirit in our life serves not only for our own good. It enables us to be efficient Christ's witnesses in a society sorely needing Him. We become living tribute to God's love and power when we let the Spirit to operate in us. Finally, I want to underline how every believer can access what I went through. The love, the serenity, the happiness in God's presence. The Holy Spirit allows this. You don't have to go through near-death experience to come across God in a strong sense. Right there, waiting for you to invite Him in, is He. We really appreciate you telling us your amazing tale today. Your observations and experience have been absolutely inspirational. I appreciate Let Me Share. I hope everyone hearing will personally feel the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of